Hi guys. Um, I was actually trying to see if I could um, adjust my camera some kind of way uh, before I got started, but it started anyway, so it's okay. Um, I wanted to come this morning and talk about um, a topic uh, that that I, I know I need to talk about. Um, once again, I really think I am going to, um, make the, uh, I have a few videos that I am putting in a, um, I'm probably going to put it into a playlist, um, about, uh, basically the problems in the black community, you know, uh, the, the way, uh, just a lot of things that need to change in the black community. That, that's particular. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to put all that stuff together because it all goes together and, and we need to, you know, I want to have those things all in one place. So, but this particular video, let's see where I want to start. Now, The thing, okay, I'll tell you what, the video is, a, this video is going to be about boundaries. And it's going to be about, at the end of the day, the fact that Black women today and always have really never, ever had boundaries for Black men and the, the Black men that we are in relationships with. We've never had boundaries. And I think that is why so much goes on with with that dynamic between us. But before I get into that, uh, that's just kind of, you know, the carrots in the soup. You know, I need to put a few more vegetables and celery and some and some spices and stuff into this whole pot of soup before uh or this stew before um before it actually comes together. So, um, I've been seeing a lot about this uh, Tommy Sotomayor, who has a long history, uh, being on this uh, Fresh and Fit podcast that I am actually very new to. Um, have never sat and watched a show. Um, I think I may have seen clips or whatever, but, you know, and I may be wrong for this uh, because I, I take advice, lessons, teachings, whatever, from anybody that I really feel can tell me something, teach me something. And, you know, I, I know, honestly, really within the first I'm going to really say five seconds, but I'll say, you know, 10 seconds, whether or not I want to hear you. Um, and just from the clips that I have seen from other U uh, YouTube uh, content makers, uh, they would not and cannot tell me anything because, first of all, they're the whole energy of their show is completely wrong. You know, you, you can, you know, they don't really even have to say anything. Just the fact that you have all these other either light skinned, white, uh, and other um, non-black women on a show with black women, and there's two black men, that already just from jump lets me know the energy of what's going to go wrong. I already know the black women are going to get attacked. I, I mean, I already know, like, they don't have to say anything out of their mouths. But at the end of the day, uh, these are two that I, I would never take any advice from. They couldn't tell me nothing. I, you know, it just, first of all, they're too dumb, you know, and that's not to say that, you know, I don't, I don't get stuff from young people. I get a lot from young people. I really do. Um, and I may actually make a video about that because to, to really be honest, there's a lot of, uh, you know, intelligent young black men. I've met some, you know. Uh, so once again, when I always say this, this channel is not about black male bashing, it's not. It's really not. It may sound that way, 
<laughs> but it's really not. Um, and some of the things, uh, the young women, I'm just going to stop and say for a pause. What I see with young black women in this generation, in my opinion, is phenomenal. The courage, the strength, the opportunities. I mean, it, it, it's, it, it's so phenomenal. And in, in some ways, I kind of wish that I was brought up in this generation. I mean, it's a lot of stuff wrong with it. You know, a lot of stuff wrong with all, all of the generations. You know what I'm saying? But there's so many opportunities for women nowadays. I mean, there's so many. Black women at this point right now could own the world right now. And that's really where they're going. But, you know, that's another topic. But, I mean, and the knowledge that they have the knowledge that they to be a part of what's going on with the teachings and the realizations that is going on right now uh, for young Black women to, to divest, to understand Black male soccer. I mean, uh, that alone is, is so powerful in remaking the black community and the mindset of of uh, of the black uh, community. I mean, it's, it's it's phenomenal. That'll be a whole nother video by itself. But getting back on track, um, I have not seen the video. Um, I tried to find it a little. Not really. I tried to find it a little bit. I know that I will find it, but I I think it's good that I have not. Uh, actually seen the video before I talk on it because um, there's just certain things that trigger me. And so I don't want to uh, get on here and have, you know, a different perspective than what I want to talk about because I got triggered. If you understand what I mean? Um, it leads into because I actually, I actually uh, listened to the young woman herself. I listened to an interview that she gave. Um, nothing but intelligent, nothing but self-control, nothing but restraint, you know, in her that I saw. Um, I know, like I said, I mean, th there is a uh, an atmosphere with just what is going on right now between black males and black females. Um, it's, it's just a whole other dynamic, you know, black men at the end of the day to really sum it up are trying to paint a narrative. They, they have been trying to paint a narrative for a very, very, very long time about black women and their uh, uselessness, their um, uh, undesirability, their uh, or undesirability, their um, personality, their their. I mean, all of that. You know, it, it's 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 a narrative that's being painted. Um, and I'm gonna try to keep my composure and not curse. Um, it, it's a narrative that, that is being painted and, and the narrative is being painted because at the end of the day, they really cannot prove any of the, the, the BS that they say about black women, period. Now they can probably point to specific black women that some of that stuff was like, I don't know, maybe their mamas and their grandmas want shit or whatever, or, you know, the women in their family want shit or whatever. And so, you know, they, they just mad at all women. I don't know. And that ain't even to disrespect nobody's mama, grandmama, aunties, and all of that. That's just to say, you know, I don't know where they come from. I don't know what black women they've seen and they've been around. Because I'm going to tell you, I grew up in the hood of Fifth Ward, Texas, which is a sub, which is not even a suburb. It's, it's, it's a part of Houston, Texas. Uh, and Fifth Ward, anybody know anything about Fifth Ward? Fifth Ward ain't no joke. It is the hood of the hood. 
And, you know, of course, it has its parts and aspects of it, too, but it's, it's the hood at the end of the day. And I've been in the projects. I've been in poverty, in, in stricken, you know, I've, I've been there. I've been, I have been friends with, with people um, from, from that place, from, from the ghetto of Houston. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, at the end of the day, I've seen it all. I've seen, um, man, man, I have been in housing projects growing up and you walk into these housing projects and you expecting, you know, baby mama with 15 kids and, you know, she in there, you know, uh, uh, just being, lazy and being uh you know trifling or whatever like the way that they try to paint it and I'm, i can tell you just because they are there does not mean that that's what you're you're going to see but this is what the, this is the narrative that a lot of black men try to paint because they know a lot of people that are outside of the hood don't know you know what i'm saying so they're trying to put that out there for the world but I'm gonna tell you from from uh, from experience. These are some of the cleanest houses that I have ever been in. These are some mamas, aunties, grandmas, whatever, who are raising respectable children. They care about their children. They are making sure that their uh, children go to school. They want something for their children. I mean. Uh, yes, ma'am. No, sir. You know, and I got to remember now this, I'm, I'm older, I'm from the South. And so, like I say, this is me growing up. This is what I've seen with my own eyes. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm talking well-kept houses. You go up in, in, in some of these people's houses, yeah, they in the hood, yeah, they in the housing projects, but I'm talking about clean, smell good, looking good, floors mopped. I mean, this is what I've seen with my own eyes. I don't care if she got 10 kids. All of them are sitting right there on that couch, being respectful, being obedient, or in the room somewhere where if she tell them, go to the room, go eat your cereal, go sit down, go play your game, whatever. It's good parenting from what I've seen without a man. And I'm not advocating that, but I'm just telling you, it's not all of what they're trying to portray at the end of the day. So. Let me get back to this and, and move on because, man, that time goes so quick. Um, I have not seen that video. I'm going to find that video. But what I want to say about that video and about platforms like that um, is the fact that, you know, these men and men who do content like that and men who... Are, are there to paint the narrative of ghetto, ghetto Queen Isha and, you know, she ain't shit and she just, you know, they want to paint that particular narrative of her um, for, for whatever reason, for profit, for just the fact that they ain't got shit else to do and they have no life and black women or how they're come up. Uh, but whatever the narrative is, you know, that is what they're there for. I mean, that is what they're there for. That is what they're doing. That's how they're making their money. Everybody can make money really off of a black woman, really no matter what they do and what they say. And black men have got that. They understand that. And that is how so many of them come up. So when they are on platforms like that, the, the point is to trigger. The point is to try to bring about, and I actually made a video about that when I talked about, uh, it's a video that I made, I think, talking about the, the mammy, the mammy narrative, I think, if you all go back um, into my videos, you'll see I made a video called the, the mammy narrative. And, you know, I talked about in that video how the new mammy, which is the new one that they like to pick on and, 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 you know, bring up and, and call, you know, and, 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 uh, what is it? Make fun of is the new Queen Isha or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's the ghetto girl. She's the new mammy. 
that they're out here picking on and trying to make her into something undesirable that that you know and so uh this is this is the narrative that is painted they are they do and they say things that are triggering because they want to see if they can make the ghetto queen come out the head rolling come out the 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 eye rolling come and just the ignorant whatever so they can say you see you see what i'm talking about you see that's all it is that's really all it is um and at the end of the day what's so foolish about that is the fact that when you trigger anybody another side of them going to come out you know what i'm saying like i i am very um I'm I'm very uh very very patient, <laughs> very patient. I am very um I'm I'm fairly soft spoken. I'm I'm not confrontational and things like this. But there's still another side to me. When when you hit that nerve or when you get when you hit that spot, like so many black men because they know us because they're our sons, fathers, brothers, cousins, whatever they grew up with us. They know us. They know how to push those buttons. You know what I'm saying? And so when they do that, yeah, another side's going to come out. I get straight, you know, and I call it Fifth Ward Ghetto. That's my straight Fifth Ward Ghetto uh, side that's going to come out. You're not going to get me to calm down. I'm not going to stop until I get my point across. And yeah, it's a whole other side of me. It's still me. I'm not ashamed of it. It's still me. I don't show it like that because most of the time I don't have to show it, but it's still a part of me that it's just me. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I grew up there. That's my life. That's my lineage. That's my heritage. You know, that don't mean that I'm ignorant, ghetto, and all of this kind of stuff, but it's still a part of me and it's still there. And black men know that there is a part of every black woman that, yeah, you can trigger her and yeah, you're going to take her right back to the hood. Even black girls who, who a lot of times are not even from the hood, they may be from the suburb. It's still a triggering part of her that if you hit that, she's going to change. She's going to act different. And so this is what happens on uh, these platforms. Uh, they, they hit, because I'm going to tell you something. Black men and men in general know how to trigger parts of in a woman that nobody else can. Like, like a, a, if another woman says something about another woman, at the end of the day, really, usually you can pretty much kind of sum that up to being uh, jealous or, you know, she just throwing shade. She really probably because she's jealous or hating or whatever, or just, and some of them are being pushed by, by guys to do it, whatever, you know, or she's just a mammy or just whatever. Um, but there is a, there is something in, in men that when they say certain stuff, they have a way of saying it that can hurt a woman like no like nobody can. And that's just the truth. Um, I think it comes from a deep seated place that that's kind of it's kind of um that's a deep subject. But to to make to give an example of it before I continue on, to give an example of that is when another female, let's just say another female call you a bitch. Okay. Like I say, you can pretty much, you know, you're going to either, I mean, more than likely it's like, okay, well, you a bitch too. You know what I'm like? It's not as hurtful because you're looking at it, like I say, like you're going to just stand up and defend yourself or uh, she just hating. You know what I'm saying? And it's not really going to hit you like if a guy said it. Even a guy that you don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But when a guy says you a bitch, it's like it hits different because it comes from a different place. You know, he means that in a whole different way than what a female means. You know what I'm saying? And so um, it, it just hits different from when a guy do it, does it. And so 
I think what went on in that uh, Fresh and Fit, uh, Fit podcast, what I know of it and what uh, the, I, I haven't even seen it, like I say, the fight or any of that. I don't even know if it was a fight. I don't, I don't really know what it was, but I'm going to go back and I'm going to look at it. But I think uh, it was a triggering, the whole thing was supposed to be triggering anyway. Um, and th let me get into the boundaries. Let me get into the boundaries. So I feel like one of the ways that especially black men are able to hurt black women in, in such a deep seated way, a lot of that, and I mean, this honestly can go for all women in all cultures you know, really, but since my platform is pretty much for black women, I'm just going to aim it toward us, but it can go in either way. Um, but despite the fact that these, these men have a way of being able to hit your soul with something that just cuts so different, you know what I'm saying? I think a lot of it is because of the fact that we black women don't have boundaries and have never had boundaries and have never been taught to have boundaries and have never even thought about having boundaries when it comes to our men. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is, you know, there's a standard that everybody holds for everybody. Okay. With that standard, it's like people can come at you and say whatever they want to say. I mean, because you, you, at the end of the day, you can't stop it. But it's like if another female come at you, let's say a black woman, another black woman come at you at a, at a certain kind of way. Well, at the end of the day, it's like you have boundaries of, of just how much you finna take off of her before you're ready to fight. You know what I'm saying? Um, there are boundaries, and in, in, in my opinion, in the Black community that are a, a lot shorter for people of different colors or, or different races, ethnicity, ethnicities, whatever. You know, like at the end of the day... <laughs> At the end of the day, a white woman is not going to be able to get away with saying the same thing to me that a sister can say, if that makes any sense. And 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 it's not because I'm giving the black woman like more leeway or whatever, but it's the fact that she's still black, she know me. And at the end of the day, I can probably say the same thing about her. But when you're talking about a white woman who is not from my my culture, not from my community saying something derogatory to me. It it's it's different. It, it's different, and my um, my tolerance for that is way shorter, way shorter. It's just certain. As a matter of fact, it's just certain way you're not going to even approach me a, as a woman of a different color, even trying to come at me. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's. <laughs> I hope I get what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? It's it's just like, not that they can all, you know, not that, you know, the black woman can say whatever she wants to me. But what I'm saying is that a white woman surely ain't going to be able to say it. You, know, you see what I'm saying? And so, um, it, it's that's called boundaries. You know what I'm saying? And whether we realize these boundaries, whether we, um, understand these boundaries we have them we have them um and when it comes to however black men because like i say they are our brothers cousins fathers uh they are close to us they are intimate with us we have birthed them so but but there has it, and it just seems to be that there has never been black women really holding black men 
on any level of any kind of boundary at all. They are pretty much free and open to do and say and feel and whatever, um, any kind of way toward us. And we don't hold any, really any boundaries toward them. And I think that we should, but I think the reason that we don't is because of a lot of religion. I think it's a lot of um, just history, our history, our um, our understanding of who men are, that whole man is the head, that whole honor and respect to men, that whole, um, you know, uh, not just man is the head, I just said that, but like, um, just giving them the utmost respect, the king, you know what I'm saying? And even some of it, that whole black man is God. I mean, you know, we have that. And some of that stuff is like unconscious, deep seated within us. Um, and so I think that is why we don't put those boundaries in our relationships and in our dealings with black men, the way we have boundaries for everybody else. Now, um, it's even, you know, it, it's even, I'm going to go here just real quick. It's even uh, different um, right now when like, mm -hmm. I'm going to speak for myself because that's what I do on my channel. I speak for myself. I give my own personal um, examples and things that have actually really truly happened to me and things that I know of. But I do that uh, because I don't want nobody to say that I'm just, I'm just guessing. I'm just... Uh, just making stuff up. I give real life examples. And so that is why, you know, I can, I can throw out the disclaimer that, you know, my channel is not just making up a whole bunch of bullshit. This is really stuff that I've encountered or stuff that I've seen or stuff that I experienced. Okay. And so with that being said, um, now, Going into a little, just to give you all an example, my experience with dating, um, my experience with dating black men and being married to black men, um, and my experience in dating white men, and let's just say uh, other races of men, you know, um, is that if I'm dating a black man, like he just, and even if it's subconsciously, he has a different type of leeway and uh, different uh, different amount of rope that I'm going to give him than I'm going to give a white guy. And that is just the way it is. Like, and, and, and some of it is also, you know, the fact that I've learned and I've grown. And it's not that I'm allowing the black man to abuse me more and I'm not going to tolerate the white man's, you know, at the end of the day, I don't want to tolerate it from anyone. So a lot of it is that it really is my growth. It really is my maturity. It really is the fact that, you know, I see differently now. I'm completely awoken conscious. Don't mean that I know everything. But I'm coming from a whole different mindset and understanding than, uh, you know, I, I was years ago. And so um, I've seen, you know, because at the end of the day, all men will try to get over on you. All men will try to just have sex with you and leave. Um, it's not necessarily always just, just a, a black man thing. And that's one of the things that, uh, you know, I, I would like for you ladies to understand, even especially when we're talking about divesting, it's not just stuff that black men do and, oh, white men ain't going to do this. And, you know, so I can, I can be safer with a white man. N not necessarily, because at the end of the day, a man is still a man and you still a woman and you still pray. You know, you see what I'm, uh, what I'm saying? It's like, you know, you have to vet all of them. You know what I'm saying? Um, you got to watch white men too, which is the, the God's honest truth. You got to watch them too, because a lot of them, you know, a lot of them are out here trying to do the same stuff that black men do. I mean, here's some 
some some white men out there who are trying to give it black women because they really seriously think black women are desperate, that black women are weak, black women are gonna let them get over on them because they let black men get over on them and they can do the same stuff to them that black men can do. And you know, maybe they can, you know, but I know with me where I'm concerned, it's not gonna go that way. Like, you know, I don't let anybody abuse me at this point, but for some reason, I just seem to see a white man's game or uh, like a Hispanics man game. Like I, I can see their game a lot quicker sometimes maybe than I can or than I would have a black man's because of the fact that I think going back to black women not having those boundaries for black men, I think our rope that we give black men is a lot longer. If that makes any sense, you know, to you than what we would give other men. Um, I don't know why it is. It it just is what it is. You know what I'm saying? It just, it just is what it is. Um, and so uh, with that being said, um we we have no boundaries we really and i'm reading a little bit because i did write a little bit of stuff down um um but yeah um we are going to have to first of all set those boundaries i mean you know it, it's we need to have boundaries for everybody anyway but, you know, black women, we as black women are so giving and we are so self-sacrificing. That That's one of the things that I can say about most black women I, I, I know, have ever known, and probably the ones I don't know. We are so self-sacrificing. We will put everybody above ourselves. And one of the things, you know, that I really admire about this generation of young black women today is that they kind they put an opinion in. You know what I'm saying? Like they're not letting you just take them all the way over to the edge. You know what I'm saying? It's like they are learning to have healthy boundaries. But I think women my age, you know, I think it's something that we're having to learn. Um I think that I'm just going to say it, even though I hate it, but the mammy syndrome is very, very uh, strong in women of, of my generation and older. I think it's very, very strong. I'm, I'm so happy that, um, and a lot of it is because of YouTube, a lot of it, well, you, a lot of YouTube uh, content creators, females, um, and a lot of it is just my own seeing and just being real and my own change and my own um, being a different person that, you know, I don't carry that, that mammy narrative like I used to, I, you know, uh, because when I first got here on YouTube, yeah, I would have been a whole straight mammy because um, my content was about uh, the black the black relationship. It wasn't always so much about black men and lifting up black men, all that kind of stuff. My stuff has always been about the black relationship and the black uh, community and how to make it better, how to make that relationship better. Until I learned and jumped into this sea of piranhas on on YouTube, that when I first got on here, like I didn't I did not know. Oh my God, I didn't know what I was getting into. I really did not know. And I was attacked viciously. I mean, seriously, like that. And I'm going to be honest. Uh, that is the reason why I stopped, you know, really doing a lot of videos. That's the reason that, in a way, I kind of got off. And, like, I really wasn't doing videos at all for a while because I was getting so viciously attacked by Black men. Um, I was getting, man, I was, I was getting attacked where there was not even a need to be attacked like i think there was a time on here on youtube when black men were just going around just trolling every black woman's content i don't care what she was talking about like they were just on the attack and it was crazy and like 
I just, man, like it was a lot for me. And um, I don't know like how many, how long some of these other uh, YouTube content creators right now, the, the, the women that are so strong right now, uh, Cynthia G's, the Nyla's, uh, the, um, what's that other lady I like? Um, Woman's Fear. Um, and so many others that I, you know, that I, I listen to and, you know, really can't think of their names of their shows right now. But I'm so grateful for for those women because they have, in so many ways, cleared the way and cleared out all this trash and this dust to the extent that now women can come back and speak and be stronger. Because quite honestly, it's a lot of that stuff that I was saying before, but because I was, I was felt like I was like out here on my own, you know, and there was some other ones that I was listening to back then too. Uh, but the, 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 the atmosphere was just so saturated with black me, like they had this, they had YouTube and, you know, it just, man, in like some ways it wasn't even, it wasn't even safe. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't even safe. Uh, yeah, it, it was just really crazy, but I'm so thankful for, you know, strong black women content creators who have been able, like I say, to clear the dust and clear the trash and bring a whole new perspective and allow women to come, to come on here newly and come back on here <laughs> and be able to speak our peace and speak our truth. You know what I'm saying? I'm thankful for that. Um, there was another woman, and I'm not, God knows I'm not trying to get off track, but there was another black woman that I heard that was, I don't know if she was on Nyla or Cynthia's, uh, Cynthia G's channel, I'm not, I uh, can't remember, but it was a topic that they were talking about, and this particular woman came on here, and she actually said the same thing I did, was that a few years ago, she actually got off because it was so, man, it was, it was like a sea of piranhas, like, black men were just like crazy. I mean, I'm, I remember, I'm going to give y'all a, a quick, uh, just a quick little thing. Um, I had met this guy. Well, I'm not going to say I met him, but let's just say um, some kind of way I came across this guy's content. And it's crazy because the, the one video that I saw of his and, and that I really kind of got on his radar, or he on my radar, uh, was because he had actually said some very positive things about black women and things like that. And um, with that being said, you know, and I really didn't even go to his channel and like look him up and all this kind of stuff because some of his other stuff, I didn't do any of that. But I kind of jumped on that video and I, I remember I jumped in his um inbox or whatever and I was just telling him how positive and how wonderful it was that he was making content like that out here with so many other black men just dogging and bashing black women so horribly you know and you know he said thank you and stuff like this and all of a sudden the next thing you want you know he wants to you know uh, kind of talk to me and see what my platform is about and you know what I talk about and stuff like this and you know, um, as time went on, I began to listen to him, uh, like I would listen to everybody, anybody else in support, you know, and but I saw his content, which is like, it was changing. Like, it was just like, um, at the end of the day, he didn't like black men. Just at the end of the day, that's what I gathered from him. And because honestly, that was the only video that I, once I did finally go on his page, because I started seeing that kind of change in him or what I thought was a change. It really wasn't a change that really was who he was. And that one video, I don't even know, like if that was maybe something that he had when he was new on YouTube and he, he you know, saw that badgering black women or whatever was the, I, mean, I don't know, but that was really the only good, positive, and uplifting video that I really even ever saw of this dude. Um, and, you know, I should have done my research. I should have, you know, checked him out more, but I didn't. Um, and so when I began to see the change or what I thought was a change, um, you know, I, I, I talked to him about it. And like, you know, I would ask him questions and I was, you know, wasn't like, 
confronting him like on a in a bad way, but I was just like asking him questions like why you you know why do you say this and why are you saying that by, by black women and blah 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 you know and at the end of the day uh he 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 did not like black women he it you know that was just it and it didn't take me very long to see that but he didn't like black women and so I remember um I made a video I can't remember about what or whatever but whatever it was he didn't like it he watched it um and this dude now remind now mind you I am a small fish in YouTube I'm a very small fish uh still I'm a small fish you know uh I, I would love for my platform to grow you know I think it will you know it's gonna do what it's gonna do uh However it does it, it's going to do. Whoever I reach, whoever I talk to, whatever, I'm, I'm grateful for that. If I sit here and talk to three women every day, I'm, I'm still good because I'm still getting my message out. You know, everyone wants growth, but, you know, it is what it is. And so, um, yeah, so this guy took a clip of what I said, put it on, and he made a whole video about it. And dude, but next thing I know, like I'm having just people after per, per, guy after guy after guy coming in onto my platform, just basically attacking me. I mean, they didn't know me. They didn't know nothing about me. They didn't like, I wouldn't, I don't give like personal information about my life or whatever so much that they could all stitch it together and be like, that's who she is, you know? Uh, so of course they were just making shit up. but. Um, he did that. And it's just like, dudes was just like brutally dragging me. And so once again, I got in dude's inbox and I'm just like, dude, like why? Like I, I did, whatever I said was first of all, not necessarily even, uh, directed at you, but I guess he felt hit. I don't know. But I'm just like, why you got your, you know, like your minions just after me? Because I mean, basically, dude told them, get her. Because that's what he was saying in the video. Like, he was like, get her. And I'm just like, damn, like, I'm I'm a small fish. And I'm triggering you like that to where you got to get your, your dudes after me, like, for real. Uh, but I guess I did, you know. Because so, so many of them are so very weak, uh, emotional, and feminine until... You know, that's what they do. They want to attack women. And so, uh, but yeah, after that, I think it was probably after that that I began to kind of back off a little bit because I'm just like, yeah, this, you know, when you're out there by yourself, it, it really uh, can be a lot. You know what I'm saying? So once again, I go back to saying that I really appreciate these strong female content creators who are all together and attacking these narratives, you know what I'm saying? And and bringing down, you know, so many of these, these guys who are just really out here pumping bullshit, promoting bullshit and promoting lies of black, about black women, you know? So, but once again, I will even take that and say, we need boundaries. You know what I'm saying? Like, we can't just keep having in the back of our mind and in our heart, Oh, he the man, he the head, you know, God put him first or whatever. And just having these worshiping type ide ideologies about black men, because at the end of the day, they don't have that toward us. They, black men have boundaries all over the place for black women. They always have. They have boundaries all the, they're not going to take care of no black woman. Some of them, most of them. They are not going to let no black woman say certain stuff to them. They are not going to let a black woman behave a certain I mean, it's just all kind of boundaries that black men have for black women. Some of the boundaries are even unwarranted. Like, they don't even need to have them kind of boundaries, but they do. They have those type of boundaries. Like, a lot of these black men, in their foolishness, um, and in their just being really just uh, uh, cheap and don't have anything, uh, they have that whole boundary of, I'm not going to take a black woman anywhere any more than uh, like fast food at McDonald's. 
and she's supposed to give me some ass for that. You know what I'm saying? That is their cutoff. That's their boundary for a black woman. But let them get a Becky, let them get a Maria, or let them get a Chin Lee. And you watch and see how far that boundary stretch. But for a black woman, oh no, you right here. This is what you're going to get. And so, with that being said, we need to have boundaries for black men. We need to have black, uh, we need to have boundaries for all men. Let me say that. But we especially need them for black men because most of the time, the only way a person is really going to learn um, uh, a, a, a lesson is that you pretty much going to have to give them what they give you. You're going to have to give them pretty much like that same energy of what they give you. And so I think that is the shocker. I think that is the game changer. I think that is what is going to continue to be the game changer in the relationship of black men and black women is that black women are going to have to start putting up boundaries and putting up, oh, you're not going to go there with me. Just like I made the video um, last week about, um, or was it actually this week? I made the video, you know, um, talking about, uh, I just lost my thought, uh, but talking about um, certain things, you know what I'm saying? We, we are, we should just not accept from anyone, you know what I'm saying? And so when we encounter these black men that are just so far left, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and feel like they can come to us in any way and say anything they want to say and behave any way that they, they want to behave, we got to have some boundaries. And the other reason that we need to have boundaries is because, you know, those not having boundaries are getting Black women killed. Now, that's on a serious note. It's getting Black women killed not to have boundaries with these Black men. There is so much abuse. There is so much tolerance there's so much you know of you know black men being able to you know talk about black women any kind of way call her bitch call her hoe call her whatever and oh it's just the culture you know what i'm saying rap about black women any kind of way they want to rap about black women and black women still buy the music black women still support black women still will go in the club and dance to that bullshit and yet we but we want to be respected you know what i'm saying you got to put a boundary. You have to put a boundary. It has to be that, no, you're not going to call me out of my name. And no, you're not going to, you know, try to trigger me to the point that you're going to try to make me act ghetto and ignorant and whatever. You know what I'm saying? You're not, you're not going to pull me down to a level of where you think you want me to be. And that is what a lot of black men do to say, you see, that's what I'm talking about. That's why we don't date black women. That's why we don't such and such. That's why we don't respect them. That's why, because they trigger you. And they know that they have a way of triggering you and pushing you to a whole other level that can't nobody get you to that level. No one else can get you to that level like they can. Um, and when they get that out of you, it's, see, that's why. That, that's why her mouth too 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 uh too big. That's why she talked too much. That's why we treat them the way we treat them. But the 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 thing is always they don't tell you what they do to get you to that point. And that's always the case. Black men go all over the world talking about talking down to uh black women and what we do and how we do it and how she don't do this and how she don't do that and you know how how she they they change and everything which which is so retarded because everybody change everybody changes but they never tell the part of the stuff that they do to trigger black women and to get black women to that point because if anybody is in black men's corner and stands up for black men and listens to black men and you know let black men do say feel and and treat us any kind of way it's a black woman it's really those other women out there who are not putting up with that bullshit they're not and that's why they don't do them like that they do black women the way that they do black women 
because of the closeness and the intimacy that we we have with one another. And because, like I say, Black women have never put up boundaries for Black men, ever. From our mamas, 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 there is no there is no boundary for Black men. A Black man, and, and what's so stupid to me, Black men, uh, I have seen this argument, and I finally saw this argument on TikTok. I think this argument... Uh, seeing it so many times on Facebook and just knowing the narrative of it in that, you know, uh, oh, who, who going, will the woman feed the child or the man first and who get the big piece of chicken narrative? All of that dumb shit is just, it was almost, it was very embarrassing to me to finally see that on TikTok and see you know, all these other women of other races and people of other reasons, uh, of other uh, races, like in that ignorant conversation, because that's, that's clearly a black man conversation. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, of course they calling it dumb, stupid, and ridiculous. And, you know, but there is a whole, there was a whole argument about that. That argument in itself shows the non-boundaries between Black women and Black men. Why do I say that? I say that because it is absolutely ridiculous and ludicrous to even have an argument about it's, it being disrespectful of a woman not feeding children over a man first. Come on. Is ridiculous. And any woman, and, you know, I'm just going to say any woman that puts a man first like that over her children, I'm just going to say like this, you, you're going to have problems. You're going to have problems with your children. And that's just it. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to talk about you. None of that. I'm just going to let you know. That you're gonna have problems with your children doing that kind of bullshit. And more than likely, nigga finna cheat on you and nigga gonna go, go get some more food and stuff from some other woman anyway. And you up there treating him like a damn king, fixing him the biggest, nicest plate and making your children what? And what does that prove? Like what I don't I don't see how that's showing respect. Like everybody getting to eat is respectful. How about that? How about everybody getting getting being able to eat? How about a daddy and a man that's in the house? How about he fix the food for the children? How about that? How about, you know, there being no differentiation between whether the woman get a, the food to the man first or the children? Like that whole psychology is is some dumb, stupid ignorant black man delusional that, that and I, i've been saying it so many times i wish it would die that whole conversation needs to die because it's stupid and it's ignorant and at the end of the day like i say that comes even with that being an argument from black women not having any boundaries where black men are concerned for him to even think like that so at the end of the day, I'm going to feed my babies first, period. Or everybody going to eat at the same time. I don't, I don't even get it. Like that is so retarded and stupid to me. But I'm going to end the video. Um, you know, we have no boundaries. And that is why things are the way that they are. We're going to have to create boundaries like we do with everybody else. Um, like I say, there is just a level that you know many black women are just not going to go with other people like you not going to even be able to go there with with certain black women you know what i'm saying but for a black men we bend over completely backwards we let them do say have whatever it is they want and i think it comes from once again uh just that that narrative of religion the man being first the man being head the man being whatever and I think that's why they don't change. And I think we've held that narrative for so long and so many uh, uh, generations that many black men don't see a need to change. They don't feel like they need to change. For what? They're getting what they want. You know what I'm saying? But they don't go, like I say, 
outside of the community and expect that same stuff from other women of other races. They don't even expect that same stuff that they expect from black women. But yet they call us rebellious. Yet they call us hard-headed. Yet they say we don't listen. Yet they say we're not obedient. Yet they say we're not, uh, uh, you know, we're not docile. We're not, you know, soft and feminine. The, the hell we not? Like, how are we? Black women let black men put a whole damn roller coaster on their back. And we have been doing it for generations. So it's bullshit for them to get up and say the stuff that they say. They know. And the reason that they that they even are able to do what they do is because black women don't say nothing. They don't have no boundaries for them. That, that's why they're able to do the stuff that they do. So um, that's it, you guys. I'm, I'm done. I just wanted to say that, you know, I, I would love to, to know what you think, what you um, gather from, from what I'm saying. Um, about black women, you know, not holding black men to any type of boundary. You know what I'm saying? And whether it is a woman of a different races, whether it's her culture, whether it's her brothers and her dad or her whatever, or maybe he just won't her so bad that he's going to be different toward her, whatever it is, we know they have the ability to do it because they do it for them. They don't do it for us because they don't feel like they have to. Because once again, we don't put no boundaries on them. We we really so so in so many ways we don't have any expectations for black men. We just want them to be there and to be black and to just be there really. Like, you know, so many of them they don't have to pay rent, they don't have to to give us nothing. We don't expect anything from them. They don't have to, you know, we expect them to cheat. We, I mean, we just expect certain things and we put up with, that, with those things toward them uh, or where they are concerned. And, you know, they know that, they understand that. And that's why they do what they do. That's why they do what they do. And, and we're not supposed to say anything. We're not supposed to clap back. We're not supposed to have no type of opinion about it. We're not supposed to you know, any of that, any of that. And when we do, we're being uh, disrespectful. We're being uh, hard-headed. We talking too much, we whatever. But like I say, when Maria and, or, or when Becky, you know, clap back or say something or whatever, then, you know, oh, they just being spicy. They just being fiery. Oh, I like that, you know, but you know, so even they have a different set of standards uh, toward other women. But you guys get in the comments. Let me know what you think. Let me, um, you know, I, I want to know if my message came through. You know what I'm saying? I try to stay on topic. I know sometimes I, I go different places, but I like to try to, you know, make sure that I, I bring it back home and keep and stay on the same topic. So uh, let me know what you, you guys got to of this let me know if you understand exactly what i'm saying let me know if you agree whether or not you know we need to have boundaries uh we need to have more boundaries where black men are concerned um y'all make it a great day make it a great day um thank you for listening thank you for watching like i say get in the comments let me know what you think uh let me know your take on it and into the next video See you next time.